Today I'm continuing my series on how to create a graphical RPG. We are going to create our third dialog box, which we are going to use to start creating our first character. To do this, I will use the text dialog box we made in the last tutorial. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. 1. Introductory Remarks Purpose The purpose of this particular class will be to aid in character creation by collecting information from the user about what kind of character they want to create. Here is the functionality we are going to implement. A. Take input of type string from the user. B. Validate the input. And C. Return values that the program will be able to read. The goal of this bit of code is to ask the player for two pieces of information, their character's name and their character's class. Later on, we can ask for more, for instance, their choice of starter weapon, profession, and so on. But for now, I want to keep it simple. In order to get all this done as easily as possible, I've created two classes, Dialog Text Input and Dialog Get Text. Dialog Get Text uses Dialog Text Input and not the other way around. First, I'm going to take a look at Dialog Text Input, and then, once we understand that code, I'll show you how Dialog Get Text uses Dialog Text Input to prompt a user for the information the program needs. Okay, that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. It's super simple, so let's just get started. Part 2, Dialog Text Input. Instantiate the class. So there you see my dialog equals dialog text input users text and so on. So it's very straightforward. We're just calling the class like you would a function. Part 2b, instantiate the class. This is a lot of code, but again, it's fairly simple. We're just setting the height, the line height. We've done all this before in the other tutorials. We're setting the clock. There's really nothing that I need to go into here, except for maybe self-initialized rectangles at the very bottom there. You can see that I've put the code on the screen. All I'm doing there is, in a previous version of the program, I had included this in the draw, so calculations were being done in the draw loop several times a second, and I thought, well, that's kind of wasteful. So I, I tried to put all the calculations that I could in the constructor so that they would only be done once upon creation of the class, and that's all that is. Now we go back to the instantiation of the class, and we call the made loop. You can see that up there now on the screen. Again, this is very similar to the dialog boxes we made previously. We just want to set the clock, call the events function, then call the draw function. And as you can see, well, let's go and take a look at the events function. Oh, all right. Before we look at the events function, we'll go back. We're just talking about the main loop. This is the main loop. You can see separate text into lines. I already went over that in my last tutorial, so I'm not going to step through it here, but I've put the code up there on the screen for you so you can see. So what we're going to look at now is the while loop, and here's where we have the events function. Normally we'd have an update function and then a draw function, but this is so simple we don't need an update function. So let's take a look at events. Again, this is very similar to the dialogues we've gone over previously. I really don't have anything else to add. If you do have any questions about anything that I say, please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Next, we have the draw function. Again, we've, I've gone over this in the other two tutorials. I fill the screen with a background color that I set in the constructor. There are two windows here. There's a big window and then there's a smaller window that I use for text input. We draw the big window. Let's take a look at that code. There's the code on the screen draw big window, you can see that I set up the rectangle there, and that's drawn onto the surface. It's not drawn onto the screen, we haven't flipped anything yet, but it's drawn onto our surface. On top of that, we draw the lines of text. Enumerate that bit of code on the screen right there, that's what we're doing. We're calculating, we're drawing, we're offsetting each line by text height. That's it. And then that's going to keep looping. The while self keep looping and then detecting events and then drawing, that's going to keep going until the user hits return or until they click OK. At that point, keep looping is going to be set to false. We will hand back to the calling function self user text. So that's the end of the first part of the program. Now we want to look at dialog get text. This is kind of the controlling class. So let's look at the instantiation of dialog get text. As you can see, it's exactly the same format as we have done for all the other dialogue. And then we go up and we initialize the class. And this is a very brief initialization. We just set the height of the background and then the line width. Then we call dialogue main. Again, as you can see, very straightforward. We set keep looping to true. And then we say, what would you like to name your character? We use the dialogue box we just made to get to the dialogue text input. And then we call the main loop. 
that returns the character name. But now we have to do some validation. Is the character name an empty string? That's the only thing we're checking for right now. If it is, then we tell the user that they've made a mistake and we go through this loop again. We don't set keep looping to false. So the while loop goes around again and they're prompted once again for a name. And it's gonna continue like this until they put in something that's not an empty string. So then once that's done and they have actually put in a non-empty string, they have typed in some text. Then we go to the second one and it's exactly the same thing. We just call dialog text input, but this time we ask what class would you like your character to be? And we tell them the options. Now, as long as they don't pick one of those options, keep looping is not gonna be set to false. So keep looping is gonna be true as long as they don't put in valid data. And that's it, very simple. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like in action. It does seem like a lot of work to just get a name and a class, but now that we have the class, we can easily modify it to ask for more information. For example, a preferred profession, and all the code is self-contained. In the next tutorial, I'm going to use each of the three dialogue boxes I've talked about to create the beginning of a role-playing game. In the video after that, I will implement a grid and create a player that can traverse the grid. But that's only the beginning. In future videos, I will implement NPCs, monsters, keeping track of explored areas, a quest system, an inventory, and much, much more. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, good coding.